millions of doses of a second coronavirus vaccine are being shipped from coast to coast. Moderna's vaccine rolling out early today from warehouses across the country. An assembly line of workers packing the vaccine in boxes like in this facility in Mississippi. Those trucks then getting a police escort to airports. This is a FedEx truck rolling to the Memphis airport and then loading the precious cargo onto jets, which will carry the shots to more than 3,200 locations across the country, giving the battle against COVID a second shot in the arm. News Force Ida Siegel starts us off live at a nursing home in the Bronx, which will be uh, among the first to begin vaccinations tomorrow. Ida. Yep, that's right, Rena. We're at the Hebrew home, and you know, the residents here have not been able to leave the grounds since this all began. It's been a lonely existence for many folks, and so the arrival of a vaccine will be life changing for them, as it will be for so many others. As millions more doses of the vaccine hit the ground this week, the Moderna vaccine rolling out officially tomorrow. Shipments have gone out for another round of COVID-19 vaccinations. This time, the company is Moderna, and yet again, the first in line to receive it will be healthcare workers and nursing home patients. Moderna vaccine can be shipped and stored at standard freezer temperatures and is packed in containers of 100 dose, doses each. This allows jurisdictions the flexibility to support hard-to-reach, small, and more rural areas. This is a state's decision. Between Moderna and Pfizer, they have allocated more than 7.9 million doses of the vaccine. One of the first nursing homes to receive the COVID-19 vaccine is the Hebrew home at Riverdale, who, like many nursing homes, saw their share of COVID deaths last spring. The worst parts of the spring, we're thinking that we didn't know when this was going to ever end. And tomorrow we start ending the coronavirus. And the Hebrew home is thrilled excited, gleeful that we can begin the process of vaccinating our residents and staff. Their vaccine program starts tomorrow with residents very excited. All 600 of them will be vaccinated in addition to staff. <laughs> it may like I can, I'm free again. You know, I can, I can get back to traveling, you know. I mean, I'm not going to travel too far, but you know, I'd like to see what uh, Riverdale Avenue looks like now. Which is right down the block from where we are here. The vaccine will be administered starting at 10 in the morning, and the gentleman you just heard from will be first in line to receive it. And to say he's looking forward to it is an understatement. Reporting live from Riverdale, Ida Siegel, News 4, New York. Yeah, that's so great to see. Thank you so much, Ida. Uh, so a lot of people want to know who gets the vaccine next. And tonight we have new guidelines from the CDC. The agency today recommend that all people ages 75 and older, regardless of any pre-existing conditions, get the vaccine next, along with frontline essential workers like firefighters and police officers. The CDC says the move would protect the most vulnerable population from dying from COVID. New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut all have frontline workers ahead of people 75 and older. And this is why the CDC says it's paramount to vaccinate older people earlier. This is new data from the White House Coronavirus Task Force. It reveals that one out of every 10 Americans 70 and older who get infected with the virus die. And that's why health officials are urging people over 65 to stay home this holiday season. But Americans are on the move tonight, five days before Christmas. AAA says more than 80 million Americans plan to travel. And tonight, fears are growing about the new COVID strain found in the UK and whether travelers will bring it here. News Force Anjali Hemphill is live at Newark Airport with more on that. Anjali. Well, Rana, after Thanksgiving travel caused spikes, health officials are worried about Christmas, especially now that the coronavirus may be mutating in Europe. Long lines for COVID testing outside Bellevue Hospital in Manhattan Sunday as people try to make sure they're healthy for the holidays. It's been a little crazy working in the schools with cases rising, so we're just trying to take care of ourselves and make sure our kids and colleagues are safe. 
But coronavirus cases are up as health officials saw several spikes around the country after Thanksgiving travel. And TSA is reporting more than a million passengers went through their checkpoints two days in a row this weekend, the first time since the pandemic started, which has the New York governor concerned about Christmas, especially after a new variant of the virus was recently discovered in the United Kingdom that's believed to be 70% more transmissible. Right now, this variant in the UK is getting on a plane and flying to JFK right now today. 120 countries require a test. We don't. Other European countries have done a ban. We haven't. Just last week, a United Airlines pilot program ended that offered rapid COVID testing on flights to London from Newark, as Governor Cuomo now calling to ban all travel from the country on top of federal restrictions that have been in place since March. We have about six flights a day coming in from the UK, and we have done absolutely nothing. So far, that variant strain seen in the UK does not appear to be more deadly, but it can lead to more spread, and it should not affect vaccine potential. We're live tonight from Newark Airport. Anjali Hemphill, News 4 New York. Okay, Anjali, thank you. And tonight, more than 10,000 people in the tri state are battling coronavirus in hospitals. But these levels remain below the spring peaks, and so far, most hospitals say they can handle the current patient load. We have some breaking news from Washington right now where Senate leaders have just reached an agreement on a coronavirus relief package. According to Senator Chuck Schumer, the deal creates temporary $300 per week supplemental jobless benefits, $600 direct stimulus payments to most Americans, and billions in rental assistance. There will also be help for the hard-hit hospitality industry. Well, the House still needs to pass a version of the bill, but it could go to the president's desk as soon as tonight.